Residents in a place called Hassan Abad in the mountains of North Pakistan are still picking up the pieces after much of their village was destroyed in a flood back in May. The disaster happened when a glacial lake burst its banks. The government in Pakistan says 33 such lakes are at risk of overflowing, with potentially devastating consequences. Three of the world's most spectacular mountain ranges intersect in Pakistan's north. The Hindu Kush, the Karakoram and the Himalayas forming the largest reservoir of ice outside the poles. The country's mountainous north is home to more than 7,000 glaciers. In a moment, we'll have more from a climatologist on why glaciers are melting at such a rapid rate and what, if anything, can be done to prevent the next catastrophe. People in the mountain village of Hassanabad still cannot believe what happened to them. In May, dozens of homes were swept away or damaged in a flood caused by the melting of a nearby glacier. The water came barreling down in the middle of the night. Women and children were screaming. Some people were rescuing children. Women were trying to save household items. It was like doomsday. Many of the residents are now living in tents. One of them, NGO researcher Sahida Sher, says they have no money to go anywhere else. What shocked her and others, she says, is that buildings considered safe were also destroyed. Such was the power of the water. We lost everything within two hours. We lost our land and homes, but there are still some that are suffering internally, unable to express it. And the danger is far from banished. Glaciers in Pakistan are melting because of heat waves caused by climate change. The water is creating thousands of glacial lakes. More of these have burst their banks this year than ever before. And the government is warning that more communities are at risk. In many places, the damage is already done, as one businesswoman in an area close to Hassanabad explains. There was a beautiful lake here, and this place was like an island. An international and national level ice skating event used to take place. But within a year, everything is gone. You can't tell what was here before, looking at what we have now. People in Hassanabad are trying to rebuild. But some fear it's only a matter of time until the next disaster hits. And while Pakistan is responsible for less than 1% of global greenhouse gas emissions, the lives of its people are already being destroyed. And Arun Shrestha is a senior climate specialist with the International Center for Integrated Mountain Development. And he joins me from Kathmandu in Nepal. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Uh, can, can you give us a snapshot of the Himalayan glaciers? How bad a state are they in? Well, uh, the glaciers in Hindu Kush Himalaya region, that's what we call this region, is, uh, you know, in general, uh, shrinking quite rapidly. Just to give you an idea in terms of number, uh, between 1980 and 2010, uh, and that's a period of uh, the study we have so far, most updated. Um, in Nepal, for example, um, the glacier area reduced by about a quarter, 24 percent to be precise. In Bhutan, 23 percent, right? In in part of Indus Basin, uh, it reduced by 21 percent. So uh, within those years, around, uh, you know, a quarter of glacier area has reduced. That's the past record. So that alone uh, can tell that uh, the situation is quite quite serious, quite dramatic, and uh, you know, and it's not just about uh, glacier area shrinking. Uh, mm. It is also about what uh, that means for different sectors. So it's quite quite serious, I would say. Can you talk about early warning systems? I wonder if it's possible to predict um, what's called these glacial lake outburst floods. <laughs> So, you know, there are many ways to manage uh, that kind of uh, um, floods. 
And one very effective way is early warning system. That means you place certain device, uh, you know, close or on the lake so that it tells that a glacial lake outburst flood glove event has happened. And then, you know, relays that information downstream. And that information can be transmitted to, you know, uh, communities who would, uh, which would be impacted by that flood. Uh, through different, uh, you know, media. It could be through mobile uh, messages or, you know, sound, uh, you know, systems. So that's called early warning system, which is very critical. But unfortunately, uh, uh, early warning system in, in this part of the world is quite limited, uh, both, both at national level. But also, I would like to mention that in many cases, those uh, GLOF risks are uh, transboundary. That means a lake might be situation situated in one country, but if a glove event happens, right. um, that could impact uh, not only that country immediately, but also countries downstream. So that is the transboundary dimension. Uh, and then when we talk about transboundary early warning system, there are almost none in this region. So uh, the vulnerability and the risk of GLOF, early warning, GLOF is quite high. Uh, right. And, you know, early warning, having early warning system is quite, quite important. That actually uh, um, really makes me think that the situation in the, in the mountains of Pakistan seemed determined by emissions produced by countries far away, right? Uh, if you talk about um, transnational, uh, you know, countries like China and the United States um, producing so much emissions and impacting this corner of the world, is there anything that can be done locally uh, to prevent the glaciers from melting more? Uh, I agree with you. You know, um, many of those countries emit quite uh, quite less, so their contribution to global warming, climate change is quite quite low. Uh, but they are actually being impacted quite uh, significantly. Uh, but having said that, I quickly add that even countries in the neighborhood like India and China are rapidly increasing their emissions, so they are not that low, right? Uh, but small countries like Nepal, Bhutan, and even Pakistan, their share is very low, but impact is quite high. Um, so when it comes to you know uh, managing the risk, there are multi-tiered tiered approach that uh, we could think of. Uh, but the first thing we need to think of is who are going to be impacted most, mm -hmm. and the answer is clear: it is the communities who are living in in the in the local localities. Uh, and there could be many different impacts, you know, uh, scarcity of water, extremes, failure of agriculture, and many others. So uh, definitely in terms of impact, uh, there are many ways that uh, local communities can be capacitated uh, with uh, different measures to uh, adjust and adopt to uh, those kind of impacts. Um, local level early warning system is one. Climate services, for example, uh, um, providing information to farmers about what is likely to happen uh, in a short term and longer term uh, climate systems and weather, uh, and many other options I think there are available. Mm -hmm. But then also I think uh, we need to think of uh, you know measures that can be implemented at national level going a little bit higher than uh, local right. level, but also at transnational level. But all those needs, you know, resources, it needs capacity, it needs, you know, um, support, external support. Otherwise, this uh, region itself independently right. probably will find very difficult to uh, manage those uh, risks. Arun Shrestha, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you.